Hey, John here. Let's take a closer look at the ICL 3232 data sheet. You might recall that that is the chip that's on the Z80 retro board that we use to interface the RS-232 uh, connectors to the SIO, right? Here we go, 3232 CPZ. Now, when I originally drew the schematic, spoiler alert, I put 0.1 microfarad capacitors here, 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 and here. And someone pointed out, you don't want to do that. These should be 0.47. Now, I've updated the schematic, I've updated the BOM, and I pushed it out to GitHub. So this has already been disclosed. The capacitor there, by the way, is the same one that's right here. And I changed the value of C20. So now I've changed the value of four capacitors. The C20 here, which I did to slow down the boot. And these three here. This one over there is still 0.1, as specified right here. Now, why did I get called out for this? Look at the data sheet. Uh, normally, I mean, <laughs> full disclosure, I normally work at 3.3 volts, okay? And this chip is why I have these around the shop, because this could work at 3.3 and 5 volt. And... Not all the RS-232 line drivers will run at 3.3 volts. So I, this is the one that I tend to use, okay? Now, the neat thing about this, another neat thing about it, is that uh, somewhere up here, you can use the, uh, the, you can use only, you only need four external 0.1 microfarad capacitors. <laughs> if this is all you read, <laughs> you might make a boo-boo like I did. Now, I have read more of this in the past, but it is, what do we got, 36 pages long. I, I may have missed something, obviously. Uh, when running at 5 volts, this statement is not always optimal. So, uh, here, so yeah, what, what, what happened? If you, you scroll way down here, blah, 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 interconnection, pin compatible, Power supply, capacitor selection right here on page 19. It says <laughs> something that I didn't notice, and or, you know, maybe I read this years ago when I stocked these and kind of got used to it. Uh, four of them uh, for the 3.3 volts, right? So your VCC is 3.0 to 3.6. Go ahead and use 0.1, 0.1 for everybody. If you're going to be in this range, use a 0.047 on C1 and a 0.33 over there. Okay, which is, we could do that. Uh, or if you're going to be able to want to run the chip between 3.0 and 5.5, you want a 0.1 here and a 0.47 here. So bigger size capacitor for these three. And the 0.1, uh, I'm not sure what this is all about, but 0.1 should be okay over here. If we look in here, do not use values smaller. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> then those listed in here. Okay. And that's what I did, right? I used 0.1, even though I'm, I should have used you know, something down here. Increasing the values by a factor of two reduces the ripple of the transmitter outputs and slightly reduces power consumption. Two, three, and four can be increased without increasing C1 value. However, do not increase C1 without also increasing two, three, and four to maintain the proper ratios between these capacitors, which maybe they talk about elsewhere in the document, and or just simply say there is a ratio that we need to make sure is okay. When using the minimum values, what do we got? Make sure that it doesn't degrade with temperature, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're pretty good with these uh, ceramic jobbies. So let's head over to the scope and see what happens if we, <laughs> what's the Z80 retro board doing now? Because I got the wrong cap on there and let's see what the difference is if we put the right one on there. Here's the test rig I'm gonna use. There's the uh, RS-232 converter chip. These are all currently 0.1 microfarad capacitors that match the Z80 retro schematic. You've got your power and your ground. This wire here, what is that? 9, 10, 11. That's pin 11. That's one of the transmitter inputs. It's connected to this switch here. This switch here has one um, 
pole connected to ground. The output is pulled up to the five volt line here. And if you recall how these, uh, these are pretty common standard switches. So what happens is that the, uh, the, the pins here and here are electrically connected inside the switch and the pin over here and the pin over there is also electrically connected inside the switch. So when I press the switch, what it's really doing, if it doesn't fall out of the board, is it's connecting the pin on this side over here to the pin on this side over there. So I've got a pull up resistor and I press this and it brings the line down to ground, okay? So this is my input uh, you know, waveform tester. Uh, is this button, the output will come off of, I believe, pin 14. I will just put a header like this on all the pin, on all the slots for pin 14. So I can clip my scope on there nice and convenient. I'm gonna put another header over here, a little bit out of the way, on the ground line that comes out of the power adapter there. So I can ground my scope like so, put the scope on the output here. There we are. Now we can power it up, see what we get. So I should mention, I usually throw an extra, just a little bit of bulk capacitance on my main power when I'm using one of these boards. This is certainly not necessary, uh, but you know, I just, it's a habit I get into, okay? This board over here, the power adapter, uh, if you want one, uh, you can get them all over the place on the internet, I think. This one I specifically designed as a demo on how to use KeyCAD in my KeyCAD series, I don't know, in the early, I don't know, half dozen, parts of the video I, I tinker around drawing this the outline in the rounded corners as an example project uh for keycad anyway the gerber files and all that are on my github uh site and like i said you want to know about it go look at the keycad series on my youtube channel all right um let's look and see what's coming out of this chip right now on uh, pin 14. Now you can see in the measurement settings, the current uh, value is negative 6.01 or negative six volts. Now, if I press the button, the input to the converter goes low and the output goes high. And now we can see on this scope that the current voltage is about eight and a quarter volts. And in both cases, we can see that the scope is showing a little bit of a, you know, ramping uh, sawtooth noise in there. Now, if I power this down, get the scope probe out of the way, and replace these 0.1s with 0.47s, the way it's said, then maybe we'll see some better output. Now, luckily, I bought some extra 0.47s. You know, anybody building a Z80 retro board knows that I already changed uh, one of the capacitors for like the reset to 0.47. We talked about that a while ago. The reason I did that was because I wanted to make the reset signal last longer if you ever power the thing up with a USB supply, because I have some supplies that power up very slowly, relatively speaking and it caused the reset signal not to work right. So I get these point ones out of here, and of course I wasn't watching what I was doing, and now I gotta put these back where I don't know. <laughs> Quickly looking back at the schematic, we can need one between pins four and five, right? So that's one, two, this is between one and three. We leave that was a point one. Pins four and five are right there, so I can put a cap right there. Then I need one between two and ground, and six in ground. And when I cut these off, I didn't leave the leads very long. Let's see if I can bend them apart a little bit and get them to go in there. Two to ground is right here. Oh, that's not gonna reach. <laughs> but I can put it like this and then put a jumper in there. Let's just bring pin two over a little bit so I can get to it. We can bring, uh, where's pin six? Way over there. Let's get a longer one. Six over to here. All right. Now we've got pin two and we've got pin six. So if I do that like that, there we go. All right. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And then we bring all the other side of those capacitors to ground. Like so. And look, sanity check that I'm not doing anything incredibly dumb. No, not as far as I know. Not as dumb as putting the wrong parts in to begin with, right? <laughs> all right, let's reattach the scope. Probe, put this on here, put this back on pin 14. With the input pulled high, we see, a, well, you know, it looks about as ugly as before, but not as bad. We see the negative voltage that comes out of the driver at, at negative 5.8 something, which is fine. And the noise level is not as bad. We press the button. We can see the current voltage is now uh, 7.86 volts. And again, the uh, you know the output isn't too bad. That basically the noise level is not as bad as it was with the point ones. So clearly the point four sevens are better. And I followed the spec correctly now. And there's less noise. So mm, you know, am I going to resolder my board? No. <laughs> Will I use the right ones in the future? <laughs> yes. Uh, if I have a, you know, some weird behavior on my serial, maybe I will look at this as a possible problem, but I don't think this is, you know, the end of the world, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows that, uh, uh, the, uh, values in the schematic, I just updated them and what the impact is to the design. You know what? I'm going to do one more test. If I move that over a little bit. I got another 4.7 uh, K resistor here because serial lines are supposed to be able to be driven to things that are terminated into about 3K to 5K or something like that. So that's 3K to 5K and it's handy. So let's see what we got now. Wow, look what happens to our noise now. We've got these little spiky things going down. Well, the average voltage is still around 5.8 something. Press the button. Well, the output goes up. The noise is a eh, not great, but uh, still uh, <laughs> certainly better than uh, what it was when I was not pressing the button, right? The average voltage is 6.26, and uh, we're in range. Again, a little bit of noise, but RS-232 is designed to deal with a certain amount of noise. This is within the realm of reason. I don't like it. Certainly not liking this negative going noise spikes in here. Those are surprising. Well, let's replace the caps again. Let's go back to point ones with the termination resistor on there and see what that does. Because this is probably a little bit more realistic situation, right? There we go. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and get the uh, pins four and five. Put the scope back on there. So this is what it looks like when we are what? We have the input pulled high on the line driver. Let's press the button again here. And now, wow, <laughs> this that is really nasty looking noise. Uh, you know, is this going to kill RS-232 receiver? I mean, obviously not. I've been running my circuit this way for over a year, and I don't have any problems uh, with my PC, which is connected up to, you know, a USB adapter, and I've used a couple of different ones over the year, and it doesn't seem to have a problem, but uh you probably don't want that much noise I mean, that that to me is outrageous uh but again this is why we use rs232 instead of ttl to go over you know long distances and things uh, it's designed to be tolerant of that kind of noise um Will I do this again? Uh, no, I will definitely use the 0.47, the recommended values, rather than the 0.1s <laughs> when I'm operating at 5 volts. So if I make another retro board, I'll definitely upgrade the caps. I'm not going to desolder them from my existing board. That would just be a little bit messy and annoying. Uh, if you're having serial problems, maybe you'll look into this as a potential source of uh you know issues that could you know cause your problems 
but uh, I've had no problems at all, even with the wrong <laughs> cap sizes and the huge amount of noise that we're seeing. It's it's limping along quite nicely for me. But, you know, if you're doing a new build, pay heed, <laughs> do it right, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Anyway, if you got any uh, other tidbits and, and thoughts on, on the design, how to prove it, or mistakes that you need to point out, let me know in the comments below this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.